Joining us now is former James Madison defensive end and, and new Cowboys defensive end, Rondell Carter. You can follow him on Twitter at RC5 with four underscores. Don't, don't do one underscore, two yeah. underscores. Get different people. That's not Rondell Carter. Rondell Carter is RC5 with four underscores. Rondell, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for asking. How you guys doing? Doing, doing great. Good. Excited to have you here. So is there any consideration now – because uh, I assume you're not going to be five at the next level. They don't really no. allow that for defensive ends. Is there any uh, consideration for a, a Twitter handle change now? Yeah, it's probably going to change. Um, I'm probably going to keep the RC pod, but I'm going to just switch the number whenever I get my number. You know what I mean? So the second I get it, y'all will know because it won't be RC5 tomorrow. It'll be RC, whatever they, the Cowboys gave me. So we'll see. What was your conversations with the Cowboys like leading up to the draft? Did you have any? Yeah, so initially they were my first team that I talked to when I, uh, once the season had ended. You know, like, so we went to Frisco for the national championship in Texas. Um, we went to the national championship, and I got a, a text, you know, like the day at the, the day, like as soon as the um, our national championship ended, I got a text, and it was from the player personnel director, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, I believe her name was Stephanie. And um, I, I got the text from her, and they basically were setting up a meeting because I had the NFL PA game in Los Angeles. And um, so that was, they were my first conversation. They were the first team that I talked to, first team that I finally was like, I showed my dad, and I was like, dad, look, the NFL team texting me or whatever. So, um, and then, you know, moving forward, you know, I talked to them when I got in L.A. Um, that's how I got my Dallas Cowboys hat, you know, um, the day came. And then um, I talked a few times, like, throughout the whole draft process. And then I finally talked to them, like, you know, round four-ish, round five-ish. I talked to Coach Tom, she was D-line coach. So, you know, those conversations are pretty cool, especially when I'm being the first team that I actually try to talk to you. Did you know when – if did you have it in your head that, okay, if I go undrafted, Dallas is where I want to go? Or, or did you have a few teams that you were considering and, and Dallas ultimately won out? Yeah, well, it was a lot – it was definitely a lot of – it was like 25 teams, honestly, and it came down to San Francisco and Dallas. That's what it honestly came down to. Uh, but, you know, as, as we my agent looked it over, we just felt like Dallas was the best chance for me to make a roster spot. Um, and then not to mention, obviously, that I was in Texas training for two months, so I got comfortable with Texas and I got familiar with the area. And then uh, it was a lot of subliminals out there on why I should be with Dallas. Um, in Frisco at the National Championship, they gave us cowboy hats, like that, like the actual cowboy hats. My dad was wearing it the day before the draft, all day. I don't know why he just decided to wear a, a cowboy hat. And then, you know, the balloons that my family got me for my gathering, they were shaped like stars. And then uh -oh. my family, we just redid our living room, and now our living room is navy blue and white. So I don't know. It was a lot of subliminal messages out there that, hey, Dallas might be the way. Just like Neville Gallimore, Neville told us that he went to the car wash and a woman asked him here in the Dallas area, are you a Dallas Cowboy? And he wasn't at the time, but he said he was going to go back and find her because he doesn't want her to think that he, that he lied to her. Wrong. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, he yeah, also, yeah. but he also trained here. I got to ask you, so a guy like Neville Gallimore, but let's talk about the guys they already have on the line. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence, the possibility of Alden Smith and Randy Gregory coming back. When you look at that defensive line, and you look at playing with a guy like – or having a coach like Jim Tom Sula, what does that mean to you? It means a lot, you know what I mean? Because it's one thing making it to the NFL, but, you know, you have to maintain yourself. You have to stay there, you know what I mean? And when you have good people that you can learn from, it always gives you an opportunity to extend your career. You know, so learning from other guys that were proven vets, you know what I mean, like Tank Lawrence and uh, Alden Smith and, and, and Randy Gregory. These guys know how to play the game. And then you got to be Tom Sula who knows how to teach it. You know, so when you get a guy – like that, coaching you, like you have to be nothing more than excited because it's, I don't know, it's just like you, you know you're going to go and learn something. You know you're going to be able to be able to develop as a football player. You know what I mean? Like when you can do that, it just makes your career go that much longer. And I just can't wait to come in and learn under those players and those coaches. We've heard from the Cowboys that uh, they're, they're likely to maintain their 4-3 front uh, but that they're going to be multiple. That's one of the new buzzwords this offseason, multiple. They want to have some three, four looks and things like that. Uh, when you talked with the Cowboys and, and were making the decision to come here, uh, did they talk to you at all about what they envisioned for you? Did they talk about, you know, you're going to have your hand in the dirt, or did they say, hey, you're going to do some flexible stuff for us too? You might stand up some. You might be rushing off the edge. Did you have any of those type of conversations with them? Yep. So, of course, Tom Schiller told me I'll be defensive and handling the dirt kind of guy, um, and that's basically what I've been doing. I was in college, you know what I mean? I was in handling the dirt kind of guy. But I have stood up before, you know what I mean? I've had slid down to the three technique and pass rush, you know what I mean? So who knows that hopefully I can be able to show my versatility when I'm out there. Hopefully that gives me a better chance at making it. 
And um, and I had, like I said, I had stood up before when I was at Rutgers, and I've dropped back in the coverage at point at times. So, you know, I mean, I, luckily I've done all three of those things. I've stood up, I've had my hand in dirt, and I've actually moved inside for third down and pass rush. So, you know, hopefully I can just show I can do all those things, and hopefully that gives me a shot at making the team. You know, I did notice in this draft some of you guys are coming in with people that you know. We talked about Neville Gallimore getting his teammate CeeDee Lamb in Dallas. You're getting Ben DiNucci, uh, the yeah. backup quarterback. What was the text like? Was it just fire when you guys said, oh, my gosh, we're both heading to Frisco? Uh, actually, I called him. You know, we had a conversation. Uh, he had his hat on. Um, I had my hat on. We were just talking, man. It was, it was exciting. My dad talked to him. You know what I mean? I seen his family on the FaceTime call. My, my brother actually recorded our FaceTime call. So, you know, I think my brother has it on his Twitter. But, um, yeah, me and him had a great conversation. You know what I mean? It was really fun just to be able to just talk to each other. Actually, we're going to be able to be playing with each other in Dallas. Me and him have the same kind of personality. He's a fun guy. So, you know what I mean? I, I'm looking forward to that. You were, uh, of course, at James Madison, which is an FCS-level school. And there's always those questions from people about, you know, the level of competition and, and you know, how prepared is this person to step into the NFL after coming from that level. But – uh, you know, you did have a couple games against some bigger schools, West Virginia. I know you, you had a good game against them. You played against NC State, uh, had mm -hmm. good games against them. You started out at Rutgers, which is a, a Power 5 school. Um, so do you think that you're better prepared for, for this jump than it, it may look like at first glance of just a guy coming from an FCS school? Yeah, absolutely. You know, what's funny is, you know, a lot of people don't really get it, but, you know, the FCS level, at the CAA, my conference, is the toughest conference you can play in. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of talent there. Me coming from the Big Ten level and then coming down to the CAA, I mean, obviously you have your Big Ten six, seven, three hundred thirty pound, you know, tackles, but you'll get your fair share of those in the CAA as well. You know, so it's not like I just went down to a level uh, in a conference and it's like no competition. You know, the competition is there, and if anybody plays in it, they'll know. And then not only that, like I said, we played those FBS teams and in those games. I've excelled. And then luckily I had the chance to play the NFL PA game and I went against all FBS people, you know, so, and I did well against them as well. So, I mean, I, it really doesn't matter because like I, I do feel like I'm prepared because I've had the Rutgers experience. I played in the toughest conference in FCS and then I had an NFL PA game when I was able to excel as well. So I'm prepared. Well, we are so excited to have you on this podcast and excited to talk to you in the locker room. We wait for sort of news about this pandemic and how it relates to mm -hmm. uh, the football season and training camp, but wish you the best of luck and we'll see you soon. Thank you guys. I appreciate it.